Tonight we're joined by Tom Raffle, Ian Lyle, Andy Cooper, Tommy Scott, Bob Bailey, Dean Cummings, Angus Middleton and Gavin Barry. And we have Ian Todd on the bagpipes. Good evening, cronies. I'd like to welcome you here to our burn supper in Pussy Nancy's in the centre of Mochlin. Those of us who are from Mochlin look on the village as the centre of the Burns country. It's traditional at burn suppers to welcome a guest who has presumably just dropped in. The guest is, in Scots, our gangrel buddy. Our gangrel buddy tonight is Dean Cumming from Ohio, and we welcome him to Mochlin tonight. We shall now say the Selkirk Grace Burns own grace before meal. Some he meat and canna eat, and some would eat that want it, but we he meat and we can eat, say let the Lord be thank it. Amen. Amen. Now the essential ingredients of any burn supper is of course the haggis, which is Scotland's traditional dish. And when the haggis arrives, it's up to someone to address the haggis. And Andy, that is going to be you. Yes, it is. What's the importance of the address to the haggis? Well, I think you actually answered that yourself, because uh, in Burns' time it was the, the sta one of the staple diets. Uh, that along, of course, with the, the, the neeps and the, and the tatties. Yeah, and what about the pole itself? What's so important about that? Ah, well, it's very important here in Morgan because the last verse of the poem was composed up the road here in the Coogate, and how that came about was he was invited to lunch after church on a Sunday by one of his friends, and because of that, he composed the last verse. The, the, the final, the, the, the first uh, verses were composed later, later on up at Edinburgh. And Andy, why do you like it? Why do you like the poem? The poem, well, it's, it's just full of character, you know, and of course, it was composed in Mockland initially, and it's about a very nice meal. And you get a cut in the haggis. You get the cut in the haggis, yes. Fantastic, thanks. Honest sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race. I've been them all you tat your place, pain, stripe, a firm, will or you worthy o' a grace, as long's my arm. The groaning trencher there you fall, your herd is like a distant hill, your pin would help to mend a mullin time in need, while through your pores the juice distill. His knife, see rustic labour dick, and cut you up with ready slick, trenching your gushing entrails brick like uni dish. Then, oh, what a glorious sect. Then, horn for horn, they stretch and strive, dealt to the inmost stone they drive, till all that wheel fill guys belive are bent like drums. Then, all good man may slight derive, and thank it hums. As the other hour is French for gooer, all of you would store a sewer. Fricassee would mark you spew with perfect scunner looks doon with sneering, scorn for view. On sick of dinner. Poor deal. See him out of his trash. As feckless as a weather brush. His spin off shank a good flip lash. His knee a net. Through bloody flood or field to dash. Oh, how unfit. But Mark the rustic. Haggis fed. The trembling earth resounds his tread, clapping his wild and evil blade, heel market whistling, legs and arms and heels name. Light taps of thristle. Ye poors, wha mark mankind your caring, and dish him out his bill of fear. Old Scotland wants nae skinking wear that jobs and luggies. But if ye wish her grateful prayer, ki har. The haggis. Gentlemen, the haggis. The haggis. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. As well as his poems, Burns was also famous for his songs. So now we're going to have Bob and Tommy with their version of Kelly Cranky. War he been say broad. War he been say brankie oh. War he been say broad. Come ye my Yeah. 